Since Boris Johnson resigned last September, there's been something missing in my life. There's just less reason to wake up in the morning. You could say there's almost a gaping hole in my heart. Why? Well, it's because I miss Britain's most evil camp icon. Since she stood down as Culture Secretary and Johnson's number one fan in Cabinet, we've heard less of Nadine Doris. But praise the Lord, she's back. Let's take a look. Most sane people know they were completely wrong. Nothing has gone right for us since the day they removed Boris Johnson. Mm -hmm. I think we were four to five points behind in the polls on the day he was removed again, as I said. Um, it's just, it was easily to burn away during a general election campaign. But that has to happen. You know, Conservative MPs, as I've written this week, have one very simple question to ask themselves when they look in the mirror. And that is, do you want to continue being an MP? Um, because when we're 20 plus points behind in the polls, the vast majority Nadine, of them, that's Nadine, the final question. If they do want to continue being an MP, what do they need to do in one sentence? They need to. They would need to bring back Boris Johnson because there is nothing so ex as an ex MP, particularly an ex MP who is um, has been in government and just in the party of opposition. No one wants to know what you have to say. No one wants to hear you, especially not the people stood next to you in the job centre queue. <laughs> there is no one so ex as an ex MP. Just you know that when you look in the mirror. I do have a soft spot for her, especially now she's out of power. What harm can she do other than, say, vaguely entertaining things on the television? Um, Nadine Doris gave that warning just as ITV have released a new podcast documentary into Partygate. So the principal reason that Boris Johnson had to resign in the first place. Now, this is the most salacious revelation. It's from a Downing Street source who was in attendance at one of the lockdown breaking parties. Um, so the source said this. I was working late, some music came on, the mumbling sort of rose, and there were loads of people stood around, but this time I came out because I heard the Prime Minister speaking, and that's when I heard the quote, this is the most unsocially distanced party in the UK right now. So that's Boris Johnson. This is the most unsocially distanced party in the UK right now. And everyone was laughing about it. Now, that was in reference to an event in November 2020. That's the first year of COVID. We're in a lockdown. You know, that was... That was like the, the, the serious time, you know, it wasn't like after the vaccine, wasn't the sort of soft lockdowns we had when Omicron arrived. No, that was like core pandemic. This is the most unsocially distanced party in the UK right now. Whew. I really think that like Nadine Doris and Boris Johnson are low key. It's like one of the greatest like unrequited love stories of our gen Like it's Shakespearean. <laughs> it's Shakespearean, like the obsession that this woman has uh, I just, I can't believe that it's like January 2023 and Nadine Doris is still caping for Boris Johnson to come back. Um, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, if Boris Johnson is prime minister again, I'm going back to where I came from, which I'm sure he would like. Um, I don't, I mean, Boris Johnson's not going to make a comeback. He doesn't really want to. I think he probably like narrativizes the fact that it's all gotten even become even more of a shit show since he left. He probably narrativizes that in a way that puts himself in a good light. And, you know, I think all he cares about is being able to narrativize his life as some kind of Greek epic. And so I think that he's very sort of like at peace with that. Um, but it does say a lot that, you know, when N that Nadine Doris can sit there and say, well, you know, everything's gotten even worse um, since Boris Johnson left. And, you know, it's not obviously quite accurate because I think sometimes we forget how horrendous Boris Johnson's governance during the COVID pandemic was. But, you know, it shows a lot. It, it says a lot that like she doesn't, it's not even that out, it's not that much of an unhinged thing to say because, you know, even though Boris Johnson, you know, talked about the bodies piling high, he talked about, you know, um, uh, he was had chaotic COVID governance. He was having parties during lockdowns still the chaotic and cruel nature of Boris Johnson's government has continued. And it feels like it's even been compounded, um, you know, by the kind of the failure of the government to protect the public from, you know, economic, um, economic shocks. And what that shows is that even though Boris Johnson was rightly blamed for a lot of what happened in his premiership, it's actually not just the problem, like the issue that we're li living in right now is not just the problem of one man's poor judgment or one man's mistakes. It's 
the product of quite a deliberate ideology of engineered failure, particularly in the public sector, of by the Conservative Party. You know, as to the NHS, when it comes to our healthcare system, when it comes to public sector wages, which is where a lot of, you know, a lot of the vulnerability in our economy lo- currently exists. We are governed, you know, we have to keep remembering that the Conservative Party do not believe in the concept of a public sector. So we can't look at the fact that we're in this problem and we can't look at the fact that the public sector is crumbling and think that it will just be different if we swap out one Tory for another. I know that people who watch this show probably don't believe that, but that's the kind of story that is being sold to us. That This is just a problem of one man's incompetence. But the ultimate vulnerability in our economy is a consequence of the ideological backbone of the Conservative Party, which is interested in strangling and and forcing failure onto the public sector because they don't believe a public sector should exist. They want it to fail. Um, They aren't interested in recuperating it and making it better. Um, And so, you know, that's that's the ideology we, we live under and swapping out, you know, one man for another within that that framework um, is is mean means that we're just going to continue to go down this path, and so you know this idea that the problems of Boris Johnson were unique to Boris Johnson, we can obviously see it's clear um, that 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 is not that that is not the case. That it, it's systemic within the Conservative Party that they do not want the vast majority of our public sector, um, and therefore a lot of the people you know public sector represents a really big part of the workforce. It represents the system that is supposed to care for us, educate us, you know, give us a, a, a soft place to land when we fall on hard times. They, they don't believe that that, that, that should exist. And, and that's why we're in the issue that we're in. 